Listen to me, it's a, it's a beautiful privilege to always be in the house of God. Nothing is more important, nothing is more precious than to have the privilege to be where God is. And, and God has shown us grace by being here. So I pray that you will understand that you are graced to be in the house of God. Amen. There are others that were believing to be in the house of God and they died. There are others that were believing to come in the house of God and they lost finances that they couldn't be there. Calamity and tragedy followed. But God has given us privilege to be in his house. Amen. So we are grateful to God. Amen. You have to understand that life always happens. And uh, the mystery of life is that even God himself gives somebody a card of uncertainty in everybody's life. God will give you cards, but he will also give you a card of uncertainty. It is because of that card of uncertainty that you make sure your zeal for God is never quenched. Amen. This is why God himself tells you tomorrow is not promised. God who knows tomorrow is telling you, I'm not going to tell you about tomorrow, tomorrow. I'll tell you that one is not promised. Yet he knows it. He has ordained it. He has numbered our days. He knows our rising up, our going down. But there are things he has kept mystery to strengthen our zeal for him. Amen. So when you wake up in the morning full of life, full of energy, and you can be in the house of God, understand you're there because he has willed it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not by strength or by might. It is by his spirit yes. that he has made it possible. So always comprehend that, that it is by God's will that you are in his presence. So don't take waking up and going to church lightly. Many of you may not know this, but prophetically, there are many times I look at people and I'm like, who, if you didn't come to church today, you would have not made it. Yes. I have seen so many times people escape calamity because they were in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I have seen so many family members saved because somebody came to the house of God. Amen. You are the lifeline of your family. That's why God chose you to be in his house. I want you to hear me. Can you turn off the AC, please? I'm really cold. So, so understand that by the Spirit of God. You being present in the house of God is rescuing somebody you don't even know. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, it is a mighty privilege to wake up and be able to be in God's house. Amen. It is truly by divine grace and when you understand this you will understand that God also is not done with you when you have the privilege to be in God's presence and you don't take it you're telling God like I'm ready to do my own thing you do your thing you remove yourself from the will of God you see the internet has made it convenient for us for a lot of things which is good if you are somewhere far and you can't make it to church, then you have access through the internet, YouTube or whatever, and you can still participate. But not being in the house of God, you're missing something. The Bible says, do not forsake the counsel of what? Or the gathering of the saints. It is because in that gathering, you know, humans were not created to be independent of another. Amen. That's not how we were created. We were designed for communion. If you look at during the lockdown, mental health skyrocketed. It went through the roof because people are isolated. In our time, I think it's the only time people have been isolated for, like that, whereby 
people could not see their loved ones people could not do this you could not even just go out and be at the store and just see people you can see people's faces people went insane because man was created for communion when there is no communion we perish we were not designed to be independent that is why God is creating man and he's saying it is not good for man to be alone it has never been God's will it will never be God's will so when you forsake the righteous gathering you are robbing yourself of strength mm. two is always better than one you may struggle in prayer by yourself but when you're joined with others their prayer will strengthen you Come on. hallelujah there is something the Lord said to Peter he said Peter I am praying that your faith does not fail because when your faith fails the others also will fail so what God has given you is not just for you it is strengthening other people that you have no idea amen and when you fail they will fail amen. if you are strengthened they are what strengthened so it is paramount children of God hear me and hear me with everything that is in you it is paramount it is important to be joined where God has joined you amen. it is of the utmost importance and God has willed it to be so it is God that wants it to be so so as convenient as the internet is it should be your last resort it should be your last resort when we went to the UK look at how many people showed up amen amen because people are dying to be in Revelation Church yes. yeah. thousands of people thousands of people they just wanted to experience what God is doing with us amen but you may live just 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes even one hour amen. you feel like it is too much it's a disgrace to God hallelujah hallelujah it's a shame to God where others are thirsting they bought tickets to attend you you can come every week anytime you take it lightly amen it's dangerous God is watching you and there is nothing that God hates like being taken for granted it's an insult to God be motivated to be in the house of God. David said, I was glad when I was told, let us go to the house of the Lord. There is gladness. There is security. There yes. is protection. Yes. There is elevation. Yes. There is restoration. Yes. There is restitution. Yes. There is expansion. Yes. When you are in the presence of God. Amen. Sometimes in my prayer room, I don't even have the strength to pray, but I know God is there. I just go and I lay down. When I lay down there, I am revived immediately. Amen. See, not every time you come to the house of God, you have the strength to worship. Not every time you come to the house of God, you have the strength to pray. Not every time you come in the house of God, you have the strength to praise Him. But as long as you are in His presence, He will give you a reason to praise Him. Yeah. He will give you a reason to worship Him. Yeah. He will give you a reason to lift His name. Yeah. He will give you a reason to glorify His name. Yeah. To magnify His name. Yeah. He will give you a reason. Yeah. God will give you a reason. He will. As long as you are with Him, you are allowing Him to be your shepherd. Don't make your burden so heavy so big that it hinders you from going to God who can take your burden away yeah. it makes no sense where you're supposed to get rest you're running away from it how will you get rest I'm just gonna take my time and figure it out figure what out you can't help yourself right. only God can help you amen are you sure you can hear me yes are you sure you can hear me yes so I want you to, to have perspective, a heavenly perspective of understanding the privilege to be in the presence of God. That is why for me, 
I, I have no time to rest. Yes, 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 yes. I have no time to rest for what? Their souls to save. Amen. I stood and prayed for people I don't know for how long. Went home, woke up, got on a plane, came back directly and I'm in church. And the whole team did it too. You think I would deserve and say, you know what, let me take a break. No. It is a privilege to serve the King of Glory. Amen. Amen. Just because God has given me a bigger assignment doesn't mean I leave my main assi assignment. London is one day. This house is eternal. Amen. So home is home. I charity. Be if we don't do this, there is no London. There is no India. There is no. There's no going anywhere. It all begins with here. Amen. This is our runway. Yeah. This is where we take off from. Boy. So I have to show God my loyalty. I have to show God how important I take his assignment because I'm driven by it. For me, preaching to 10 million, 10 billion, and preaching to two people makes no difference for me. As long as God has given me the privilege to minister. Amen. I will do it with every fiber of my being. That is what it's about. Be somebody that is driven in that way. Be somebody that is motivated in that way. That any opportunity I get to serve God, every chance I get to be with God, is an opportunity I may never have again. Let me give you this one last thing before we go into the word of God. Do you realize the crowns you win on earth cannot be won at any other time again? It will only be done here. There are things we will gain in the presence of God. We will be rewarded for eternity. People will look and say, that one did this for God. This one did this. In the new heaven and new earth, what are you going to do for him? Everything is perfect. So there are people who will earn stripes. That for eternity you have to see them and salute them. Amen. Don't you want to win a crown for God? Yes. Don't you want to gain something for God? Yes. For eternity people remember. When the world had fallen. Those long years ago. This man stood for God. Yes. This woman stood for God. They did things for God. That is why we are in heaven. Some of us. That when they see you they honor you because of what you did for God that the new generation of heaven will stop you and say how was it to live on earth in the time that people didn't see the value of going in the house of God and you serve God in that way you say you know they didn't know that heaven was coming mm. they didn't know that one day we will be before God so they took it lightly they will be shocked how can they not see that God is omnipresent omniscient you see there are things even I have seen angels discuss and I'm like ah if only human beings could hear this conversation. They look at each other and they say, why are they fighting for this? Why are they fighting for this? Why are they fighting for what? Like in a few years, they won't even be here. They are fighting for something other people fought for and left it. And they are not fighting for what is eternal. Good. Good. Become a person, a woman and a man of fire. Amen. That you are burning for God can never be quenched. Can never be quenched for the salvation of souls. You see, when I got to when I when I when I got on stage when after I prayed and I reminded people over and over again, may this joy of being here. May we see each other in heaven this way also. Because all these things we are doing, if it doesn't lead us to heaven, it's useless, pointless. Amen. We might as well have gone to some concert somewhere that has nothing to do with salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to Almighty God.
Say King of Glory. King of Glory. Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. Your name is glorified. Your name is glorified. And your name is lifted. And your name is lifted. Father, I pray. Father, I pray. In the name of your son Jesus. In the name of your son Jesus. That you will give me the hunger for your presence. That you will give me the hunger for your presence. That whether the man or the woman of God are not in the house. That whether the man or woman of God are not in the house. I will still be driven to be in the house. I will still be driven to be in the house. Because being in church is about you. Because being in church is about you. It's not about the pastor. It's it is not, not about, about the pastor. It's not about the prophet. It is not about the prophet. It's not about the prophetess. It is not about the prophet. It's not about the apostle. It is not about the apostle. It's not about the evangelist. It is not about the evangelist. It is about you. It is about you. Father, I just want to be where you are. Father, I just want to be where you are. Draw me by your spirit. Draw me by your spirit. That I will be thirsty for your presence. That I will be thirsty. For your presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles if you may. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. John chapter 3. From verse 3 to number 8. John 3, 3 to 8. Can we read it together? Yeah. Yes. Can we read it together? Yes. One, two, three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. One more time, one, two, three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Give me understanding. Give me understanding. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may sit in heavenly places. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to explain to you something that is a little bit intricate, but it is not. It will sound like that, but if you listen with your spirit, if you open your heart, you will be able to receive what God is saying to you. Amen. You have to understand that spirituality, walking in the spirit, is very elusive. It is something that you cannot get a hold of until you yourself become also spirit. There are two aspects of understanding what it means to be spiritual because this is where majority of believers miss it. They think being religious is being spiritual, yet to be spiritual has nothing to do with religion. 
It has everything to do with understanding the move of the Spirit of God. There are two things that Jesus is pointing out here. He's saying that, number one, he's saying, if you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are not born of the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So every believer has a two dimension. There are two levels of interacting with the spiritual world. One is seeing it. Another one is entering it. Now you have to understand the kingdom is not heaven. There is a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven has come unto you or the kingdom of God has come unto you, which is Basilia. Basilia just means royal appointment, royal acceptance. God has graced you. He has allowed you to draw close to him. But this is not talking about the high heavens or the heavens of heavens. It is talking about a spiritual dimension that permits you to experience God. Now, as a child of God, you need to understand that God desires that you become one spirit with him. Yes. There is a difference between being filled with the spirit of God and becoming one spirit with God. These two are not the same. Amen. You can be married to somebody, but you're not one flesh. Teach. Sex doesn't make you one flesh. I know that's what your pastors tell you. It's a lie. Amen. It is not what makes you one flesh. It is the act of joining flesh. But that is not what makes you one flesh. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life I live in the flesh, I live through the faith of the Son of God. Notice, he has become one with God through suffering. Through the pains Christ went to, they partook of it. Jesus said, will you really drink of this cup of suffering? This one you won't, but again, you will partake of it. Because what I go through, you will also what? Go through. So to be joined with somebody is to go through what they are going through. Amen. It is not just the act of laying together. Mm. No. It is way more than that. So you need to understand that God desires that you become one spirit with him. Now, if the Holy Spirit is in you, it doesn't mean you have become one spirit. You see, Paul speaks to the Galatians. He says, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Starting in the spirit, how did you end up in the flesh? Meaning these men were full of the Holy Spirit, but they were acting like they were bewitched. Because what God wants out of them, they are not doing. They are doing their own thing. So Paul is shocked and looking at them and saying, who did voodoo against you? Foolish Galatians. Why? Because they assumed what it meant to be one spirit with God. But they did not come to the full knowledge of what it means to be one spirit with God. Now, if you know spiritual things, when a demon enters a person, the first influence of the demon is to demonize the mind of the person. Because the demon will not have control of you until he makes his thoughts your thoughts. Oh, we are going somewhere now. Teach. Because for the devil to actually take you over, he cannot fulfill that mission until he makes you begin to think like him. The moment you begin to think like him, you have become one what? Spirit. The Bible says it like this. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. So fear is the gift of the devil. It's the devil's spiritual gift. Uh, you didn't hear me. I'll say it one more time. 
God has not given us the spirit of fear. So if you have fear, it is a spirit. Hello. Hello. The goal of any spirit interacting with you is to make you one with itself. Because if it does not join itself with you, then it cannot express itself. Because the primary way spirits express themselves in the land of the living is by using human beings to express them. And you can only express them by the thoughts you possess. When Peter was controlled by the devil and he came to Jesus and said, Jesus, stop talking about how you're going to die. You're never going to die. Jesus stopped you and said, hey, 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 walk thee behind me, Satan. I know you don't like the things of God. How did Jesus discern that this was the devil? He realized that my father sent me to die. But here you are telling me I should not die. Come on. No, you are the devil that is speaking. Yes. It is Satan that is speaking. So why do you entertain thoughts of defeat? Come on. Why do you entertain thoughts of death? Come on. Why, let, me, let me talk to where the church is. Why do you entertain thoughts of suffering? Yes. Of calamity? Of shortcomings? There is a spirit attempting to make itself one with you. Come on. You help it. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. Oh, maybe you didn't hear me. I'm going to say it one more time. There is a spirit working very, very hard to make sure you become one spirit with him. The Bible says, "Bring, make all thoughts captive. Because the primary expressions of spirits is thoughts. Even God, his primary way to express himself to you is thoughts. For I know the thoughts I have concerning you. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe verse 11. Nobody knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit that is in man. You don't know the thoughts of God because you have not joined your spirit with God. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. The Holy Spirit is living inside of you. But do you have the same thoughts? Come on. Many of us want to move the thoughts of God to accept our thoughts. By age this, I should have been like this. It hasn't worked out. So you are, you are now the one who is deciding how your life should go. But you never receive the mind of God to know what God wants of you. That's good. Teaching good. I, I, I thought by the time I'm age this, I will be married with a family. I thought when I'm like this, this should have been happening like this. I thought when I was, so all your life you've been pursuing your thoughts. Boy. And the devil, knowing that you're pursuing your thoughts, he has to started pushing his thoughts in there. Mm. By the time you woke up from your slumber, you realize that men, men plan, but only God can establish. Amen. Are you one spirit with God? Amen. Are you one spirit with God? Yeah. To be filled with the spirit of God is one thing. To be joined with his mind is another thing. There are blessings that God has ordained. You will never receive them until you are one spirit with him. God can declare the most profound blessing over your life. But its manifestation will be contingent on your ability to become one spirit with him. Jesus looked at his apostles. He blew on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. He said, go into Jerusalem. Wait until the promise comes. Ah. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were of one accord. Of one mind. Now when people read that. They think they are of one mind with each other. No, 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 no. They became of one mind. With what God had spoken. They joined themselves to the agenda that Jesus wanted. 
So they went to the upper room and joined themselves. They shut them in. They shut themselves in. The Bible says the day of Pentecost was fully come. Notice it means the day of Pentecost had begun, but he had not fully come. It did not fully come because it was dependent on time. It did not fully come because it was the time that God decided. God had already decided, that's why he pronounced it on them. But that day was fully come because they joined themselves to his agenda, making themselves one spirit with him. The day of the manifestation of what you have been waiting for is contingent on will you be one spirit with him. Hallelujah. Good. That is the question that God is posing to you right now. That is the question that the Lord Jesus is asking you in this moment. Will you be one spirit with him? Will you be one spirit? To be one spirit is not because you are praying. When you are praying, you are expressing yourself to him. To be one spirit with him is how you are living. Amen. 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 When you are away from him, how are you living? How are you living? Let, let's look at this verse quickly, if we can. 1 Corinthians 6 from verse 15. 1 Corinthians 6 from verse 15. Amen. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Mm. Notice, your body is a member of somebody. Yeah. Yes. But every body part expresses itself by what the mind commands. Yeah. My mind tells my body to move that way so my legs know what to do. My mind says, grab that, then my hand knows what to do. So you are a member of a certain body, and that body belongs to somebody. Yeah. Christ who is the head of the church. But why are you doing your own thing? Boy, good. Help it. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them to be members of a harlot? God forbid. Now let me explain to you something. What the Bible is speaking about here is not speaking exclusively about prostitutes. Because he wasn't talking to people who are going to prostitute themselves. But you have to understand the word halot there is also the same word that is used for idols. The word fornication primarily means giving yourself to other gods. The problem is when people are not studied. They are not studied. When I did that video and I said that uh, I was talking about, uh, they cut it up, they made it about sex before marriage. People have never studied. When they heard that, I said, God lasts after you. They said, God doesn't last. They don't know English. They don't even know what lust means. Lust means intense desire. It has nothing to do with sex. Amen. But when, you are, when your mind is this small, you don't understand language. You think everything is sexual because you are perverted in your mind. Amen. That's all you think about. Yes. You know, people reflect themselves. intense desire when it is an intense craving it becomes a lust that is why the bible tells you the spirit lusts after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit it did not say they are trying to have sex it means they desire each other that one wants to overtake the other they are they are battling each other that's all it means So when the Bible says, we are not children of fornication, it is saying we are not children born of prostituting ourselves to other gods. Amen. Good. 
If you read Deuteronomy, you will understand what I'm telling you. But if you have no understanding, you just cut scriptures and you think your Bible was written in English. And you will not understand that words have meaning. Words don't just mean anything. You need to understand context. When you're doing a translation or transliteration, you need to know the, the original language and what the author is saying. You become a harlot to God. Let me prove to you what I'm telling you is true. Jesus said, if any man looks at a woman lustfully, he has committed adultery with her. Doesn't the Bible say that? Yes. Does the Bible say that? Yes. Now, how can a man that is not married, he did not say if a married man looks at a woman lustfully. He said if any man looks at a woman lustfully, he has committed adultery. But adultery can only be done if you're married. Exactly. Teach. 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 Adultery can only happen if you're married. But what the church doesn't understand, you are married to somebody already. Amen. You are married to Christ. Amen. So every time lust takes you over yes. and drives you to other, you have become an adulterer. Amen. You have become an adulterer to God. Because you are joining yourself to other gods, you have become a prostitute to God. Yes. It is not talking about literal prostitution, even though that is bad. Yeah. And God condemns it. But in context, God is talking about giving yourself to other gods. But when you're not spiritual, you don't understand how much... You know, God is jealous of us because he owns us. Not just because he created us, but he bought us by a price. We are his bride. So if his bride goes to another god, you just cheated on him. Amen. Amen. I wish somebody could hear me. So, so, Paul is saying, can you go and join yourself to a harlot? God forbid. Verse 16. What? Know ye not he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. There will be one flesh. So whoever you join yourself to, you express them. You don't only express them, it goes even further. You become them. You become the same person. You become the same exact person. No difference at all. You become the same person. You become the same person. So when the Bible says, Know ye not that ye are gods. The reason why you have not entered into that dimension of being a god on earth. Is because you have failed in joining yourself. To God. Amen. You have failed in joining yourself to the Holy Spirit. Paul, Peter is speaking. Ananias and Sapphira come and lie to him. He said, you thought you were talking to me. Didn't you know you are talking to the Holy Spirit? Wait, I only, Peter, you didn't say, Shandara, ba, 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 ba. Ushika, pa, pa, pa. That says the Lord. He was having a casual conversation. So did you sell the land? Yes, we did. Did you sell it for this man? Oh, definitely. You know, Peter, we just want to support the kingdom. I said, you think you are talking. Why did you allow Satan to corrupt your heart? Did you think you are speaking to me? Don't you know you are speaking to God? There's a dimension you enter. Because you have become so one with God. Yes. Mm. Somebody having a conversation with you, Come on. they can either give themselves more life or destroy them. Amen. That's good. You become. Come on. You become so dangerous to interact with that if somebody comes the wrong way. 
When you enter this dimension, you don't need to bind a witch. You just need a witch to try to talk to you. Come on. Amen. Amen. You just need a witch to try and do something. Yes. The judgment that shall come upon. Yes. Let me talk to some people. Yes. The fire that shall come after them. Yes. The power that will strike them. Will put them in a place of shock. That they even had an idea of touching you. I don't know if you can hear me. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One spirit. The reason why Prophet Lovi can go anywhere in the world and the same thing happens is because it is not just the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has married himself to his prophet. Amen. And his prophet to the spirit of God. Amen. So wherever I go, the same manifestation have to happen. Amen. They will happen, period. You see, when people are talking about, oh, you know, this, these prophets are lying to people in America. They came to America. Okay, I went to Europe. Amen. I went to Europe. Okay, I left America. I went somewhere else. Yes. I don't know if somebody can hear me. What kind of witchcraft is so powerful that it can, it can now capture the whole of Europe? I don't know if somebody is listening to me. What kind of juju is this? Am I like an international juju? Ma- what, what, what level of juju is this? Oh, this, uh, this African prophet, and, and the shame is not there. You can see racism through their teeth. Yeah. These African prophets, they have come to steal from people. They have come. I wish you knew how much we do for the people of God. Amen. They have come to do this. They have done that. Okay. The Lord told me. It grieved me. Let me tell you. I won't mention their names. But it grieved me that they insulted a whole continent. It grieved me. I said, Lord, I don't want to do anything in America again. The Lord said, no. I will show them that I sent you. I will take you everywhere else. Amen. And then I will bring you back. Amen. Amen. It grieved me. I'm being honest. Because you see, if you, if one person is wrong, say that person is wrong. Mm. But don't insult a whole continent of people. Don't insult a whole continent. But all these things is because people have created God in their own image. They have not joined themselves. To God and what God is doing in a season. God doing in a certain time. They have failed in that. Great failure. When envy is in you. When envy is in you. Pride is in you. You will miss God. Because the Bible says again. Those who are. Of the spirit move like the wind. You can't track them down. You thought London was big. Wait till you see the next one. Come on. Hallelujah. (laughs) Wait until you see the next one. You will understand. You think you know who anointed me. You will see it even more. Amen. The success in Christ is found by joining yourself to him. Amen. That's where it's found. You want to succeed for God, join yourself to God. Amen. The problem is many men and women of God want success because of the picture they want to portray. Not because their souls dying that need to be saved. It's not about souls. 
it's not about souls. It is about, I have the biggest congregation, I have the biggest this, I, I did this on this and God... Did. No, no, no. Their agenda is not Christ's agenda. That there are people who are demonized, there are people who are sick, there are people who are lost, and they need God to rescue them. That is not what is... That is not what is motivating them. That is not what is burning in them. I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't deserve anything that God is doing with me. I don't. Ah, no, 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 no. Woman of God, I don't. I'll be alive if I say that. I am just a product of grace. Why God chose me, I would have never chose me. No, I'm serious. I'm not saying I'm a bad person. No. Who, why do I deserve this? I don't. Do you know what it is? How can you deserve anything before the king of glory? How? I don't deserve the influence he has given me. I don't deserve the platform he has given me. I don't deserve any of it. I don't deserve the anointing. I don't deserve the power. I don't deserve the gifts. I don't deserve anything of this. God just chose by his sovereign grace. And I said yes to it, but... Sometimes I sit down, when I, was, uh, when I was in London, I was thinking about it. And I was like, anyone who knows me, I don't like to think too far ahead. I like to take a day, I like to take things day by day. I won't launch myself 10 years, 5 years, to. that's too much. Jesus said, let tomorrow worry about itself, it will take care of itself. I believe the word of God. <laughs> I will not overload my mind. But in my calm and sitting and observing, I come back to myself and I'm like, hey, are we really doing this? Are we really doing this? Then I'm reminded that, uh, this is God. I will never forget what the Lord told me. If you do what I tell you to do, you will see what I'm going to do. Every time God is moving, my great desire is that God doesn't leave me behind. Amen. When you are left behind, you expire. Amen. You are no longer useful. It doesn't matter how gifted you are. It doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are. All those things are only effective when you are with him. Outside of him, your degrees means nothing. Your skill means nothing. Your talent means nothing. Your wisdom means nothing. None of those matter. Being one spirit with God is the key. God doesn't need you to take all the steps. He just needs you to take one step. Amen. Every journey begins with one step. step. Not 20 steps. Not 50 steps. One step. One step at a time. One step. If you take one step, God will launch you a hundred steps. Amen. You Amen. take another step, God will launch you a thousand steps. Amen. As long as the wind of the Holy Spirit is under your wings, your destiny and your destination is secure. Amen. Your destiny and your destination is secure. The question is, how do I become one spirit with God? Many will think this is a supernatural thing. It's actually not. Because God has already revealed his thoughts. As you join yourself with what God has revealed, let me tell you something. The Bible says it like this. You know people say, have you ever heard people say forbidden knowledge? Have you ever heard people say there's forbidden knowledge? Yeah. Wave your hands if you have ever heard that. Forbidden knowledge. 
Uh, why are you waving your hand like you're scared? It's not a trick question. Have you ever heard people say there is forbidden knowledge? Wave your hands. Forbidden knowledge. Now, let me show you that it's not true. That which is revealed is for us. That which is hidden is for God. Everything that has been revealed is for you. Everything that is hidden, you cannot search out what God has hidden within him. It's a lie. The problem is there is information that if it is beyond your ability to chew on, to consume, it can destroy you because of your mismanagement. Not that the knowledge is actually bad. There is no bad knowledge. All knowledge comes from God. If you're immature, you get deep information, it will destroy you. Not that the message or the information is forbidden. So God has revealed his mind. You need to start looking at yourself and assessing. What has God said about me? The Lord says... You are above and not below. So when I look at my life and I see everything else is not working out, I need to ask myself, who is trying to program my mind? Amen. Uh, you can clap better than that because I'm talking to you. Amen. Remember, when you're convicted by something, whether positive or negative, it is faith. Whatever you're convicted by becomes faith. Either in the positive or the negative. Keep believing you're going to die and you will die. Keep believing you're not going to make it and you're not going to make it. Keep believing you're just average. You continue to be average. Keep believing you're under a curse. You will be under a curse. Keep believing you're not enough. You will never be enough. Keep believing you can't think straight. You will have mental illness. Keep believing it. Your conviction will either be used by the Spirit of God or will be used by evil spirits. Whatever you allow to convict you will work in the positive or the negative. So now, I will ask you this. Who is programming your mind? Who is joining himself to you? Who has joined himself to you? When it comes about your children, when it comes to your relationships, when it comes to your family, when it comes to the things in your life, who is programming you? And whose report have you believed? Whose report? Whose report will you believe? Whose? It is the question God is asking. Whose report? Will you re believe the report of the Lord? Or will you believe your own report? Whatever report you accept is what you will live through. That is the key. So whether it is sickness, whether it is pain, no matter what it is, whoever's report you believe is what you will live by. So you need to look at yourself and examine yourself. Did I sell myself out to what God has said for me to be one spirit with him? Or, as the, uh, or, or is what the enemy has said concerning me 
what has consumed me and now I am one with what the enemy wants. No one else can answer this but you. No one else can answer this but you. You are the only one that will decide the outcome. God, our Christian walk and our Christian life is, is set by living by faith. The just shall live by faith. Paul said, not my faith, but I live through the faith of the Son of God. So people think faith is memorizing scripture and believing it. No. Faith is seeing what God has done and being sold out to God's power. What has Jesus done for you and have you been sold out to what he has done? Because that is already established. No one has to die on the cross again. No one has to die on the cross anymore. No one. So you believe the cross and say, yes, I'm going to go to heaven. Many of you believed the cross because you know it cannot be done. But then when you got saved, you started adding works. It's like, Did I die for you or you're trying to do works? So you create another problem again because it is human nature to always try and formulate solutions. It's human nature. If I don't take part in doing something, then it is not really done. That is a lie from the pit of hell. We are children of God. Children don't do anything. Children receive. The only thing children are required to do is to be obedient to their parent who is doing everything. God just wants you to say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are blessed. Yes, Yes. sir. I am blessed. You are above and not below. I am above. God just wants you to agree. Yes. Amen. Oh, good. That's all God wants you to do. And as you are joined with him and become one spirit with him, the truth is this. Even the things you're struggling with will fall off you. No, 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 no. Hear me clearly. They will fall off. They will lose their power. Because when your mind is changed, your ways are also what? Changed. So when God begins to influence your thoughts, you start realizing, man, why did I struggle with that thing? Why, did, why was it even enticing? Man, that was, oh, I, I was so dumb. You start laughing at the old you because you realize the old you was under a spell. Amen. Because of the spirit of God. Yes. Your mind will begin to change today. Amen. I will see. You will join yourself to one spirit and that spirit will be the spirit of God. Amen. I'm going to say this to you and we are going to finish. I don't want to take too much time. I want to give the, the media team a break. We just came back and they took over and the worshipers, they, they are struggling right now, but God is their strength. Amen, amen. But I'm going to tell you something. When Elijah was taken up, Elisha received his clothes. He took off his clothes and put on the clothes of Elijah. And then he manifested what Elijah had in him. The sons of the prophet said, surely the spirit of Elijah is upon Elisha. You fast forward into the New Testament, you hear a description of John the Baptist. Before even Jesus confesses that this guy, the spirit of Elijah is in him. It just tells you the kind of man John the Baptist was. You realize that this man was one spirit with John, with Elijah. The Bible says, oh, he wore a big leather belt. Remember, this is a man living thousands of years or hundreds of years after Elijah. 
He's wearing a big leather belt. He's a hairy man. He's always in the wilderness. Even the places that Elijah loved to hang out is where John was hanging out. The same way Elijah dressed is exactly the way John the Baptist is dressing. The diet that Elijah was on is the same exact diet John the Baptist is on. Everything about John the Baptist who never lived to see Elijah is doing everything like him. Then the Bible tells you, oh yeah, he came by the spirit of who? Elijah. Even how Jezebel wanted to kill Elijah, Elijah escaped it. But John the Baptist fell for it. Elijah cuts the heads of the prophets. Jezebel says, I will do the same to you. Elijah runs to heaven. The one who receives his spirit, guess what? His head is beheaded. When you have the spirit of a person, you become them. Amen. And you become an even better version. Amen. That is why the Lord Jesus said, greatest. Amen. Amen. Greater signs shall you what? Do. Because I go to be with who? The Father. The greater signs was collectively all of us. What we'll be able to do yes. will be more than one person. Amen. The church will be more effective than God being in the body in one place. Amen. I want you to lift your hands to God. Ask the Lord. To make you one spirit with him. Let this be a sincere. Let this be a genuine. Let it be a truthful prayer. From the bottom of your heart. Genuinely. Truthfully. Without any blame or blemish in the sight of God. Ask the Lord to help you to know his ways. His ways have been already revealed. For the most part, he has revealed that we have a sound mind. So if our mind is not sound, we know that the enemy is trying to program us to be broken. If, our, if, if we are anxious... For things, it is the devil trying to tell us not to depend on God. Who cares for us? Who takes up all our burdens? Are you hearing me? Yes. Understand this by the Spirit of God. Ask the Lord with everything that is in you to help you to follow after him. To walk after him. To cherish him. To, to, to direct you. That what you think of. What you desire. Will be so in tune with him. That even. Those who are around you. Will know that indeed. God has called you. And God has sent you. Lift your voice and begin to speak to God. Father calls me to be one spirit with you. Calls me to be one spirit with you. O oh Lord. Cause my mind to be as your mind is, O oh Father. Cause me to be joined with your spirit, O oh Father. So that when people see me, they see you, O oh Father. Cause me to think as you think. Cause me to speak as you speak. May the mind of Christ be in me, O oh Lord. Cause me to be one spirit with you. Lift your voice. 
One spirit, Jesus. One spirit, Jesus. May I be a one spirit reflection reflection of you, O Lord. Make me one with you, God. May my words be your words. One spirit, Jesus. May my thoughts be your thoughts. That's all I need, God, is to be one with you, Lord. Cause me to be one spirit with you, Father. One spirit, God. One spirit, God. Lift your voice. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord Jesus. May my life be a reflection in Jesus' of name. In Jesus' name. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice like you mean it. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Today I call on your name. Today I call on your name. Let every thought that is not of God. Let every thought that is not of God. Thoughts of defeat. Thoughts of defeat. Thoughts of death. Thoughts of death. Thoughts of confusion. Thoughts of confusion. Thoughts of shortcomings. Thoughts of shortcomings. Thoughts of weakness. Thoughts of weakness. Thoughts of limitation. Thoughts of limitation. Thoughts of confusion. Thoughts of confusion. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I pull down every stronghold in the mind. I pull down, down every stronghold in the mind. Everything that is trying to control my mind. Everything that is trying to control my mind. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it be brought down. Let it be brought down. Lift your voice and begin to pray for your mind. Lift your voice. Every confusion. Every chaos. Every chaos. Every wicked seed. Planted in my mind, God. Let it be brought down. 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 I pull it down. Let it be brought 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 down. Zakada ba shata ba da ba haya. Let it be brought down. Let it be brought down. Magere ma sadamana. Emano magere ma. Isa la mano lipa. Isa mala lipa. Listen, pray these prayers like you mean it. Yes. Because your life depends on it. Yes. 
if you're not where you are supposed to be something is wrong spiritually every problem that a man faces is caused by a spirit every one of them because we know every good and perfect gift comes from above even when you make bad decisions you didn't make them yourself you have never had a thought independent of a spirit I will say that again you have never had a thought independent of a spirit either it is the spirit of God or it is the enemy there is no decision a man ever makes without a discussion spiritually somebody worked to make you think the way you think somebody worked for you to to have the wrong situation the wrong perspective there is a spirit that worked before a demon can take possession of somebody the demon begins with the mind when the lord jesus was tempted what do you think the devil was tempting him for he wanted to alter his mind if you are the son of god he's trying to make him question if he's truly the divine son of god because he's in the flesh and the flesh is weak and he knows the weakness of a man is in his thoughts the reflection of a strong spirit is reflected by a strong mind there are people who can be broken and there are people who don't break Say in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am above every situation. I am above every situation. I'm above every battle. I'm above every battle. I am above every sickness. I'm above every I am above every financial difficulty. I am above scorpions. I am above scorpions. I am above serpents. I am above I am above every work of the enemy. I am above every work of the enemy. Every power of the enemy is under my feet. Every power of the enemy is under my feet. In the name of Jesus, I put the devil where he belongs. Under my feet, under my feet. Lift your voice and put that situation under your feet.